Uh, right, well, before we're done, something else that's brand new and out and interesting. So, uh, Benediction, which is the latest film from Terence Davis, who you've met, I know, the writer-director behind such classics as Distant Voices Still Lives, Long Day Closes, more recently Sunset Song. He made a, a film about Emily Dickinson in 2016 called A Quiet Passion. Now, another film about poets, Siegfried Sassoon. So Jack Loudon is the younger Siegfried Sassoon, who's a war hero. And this is all, you, this, if you, you know, you probably studied Siegfried Sassoon at school, but as we all know the story. So he was a, a war hero, got a military cross in June 1916 for um, conspicuous gallantry. His bravery was almost kind of bordered on suicidal. He was just like apparently w without fear. Then wrote a soldier's declaration, which was read in the House of Commons, in which he accused his superiors of turning a war of defence and liberation into one of aggression and conquest. Rather than being court-martialed, he was sent. He was diagnosed with neurasthenia, with shell shock, and was sent to a, a hospital near Edinburgh, where he met and mentored the young Wilfred Owen, whose poem "Disabled" actually plays a very big part in the film. The film is constructed as a montage that goes back and forth between the war years, the post-war years, in which he's, you know, in the company of Ivan Novello and Stephen Tennant, and in which he then meets the woman who he will later marry, played here by Kate Phillips and later by Gemma Jones. Here's a clip. I am... Yes, we already know who you are, Stephen. But who is this absolute dream in oyster grey silk? Hester Gatty. Lady Gatty's daughter? Yes. She once invited you to Carlton House Terrace. But you hardly noticed me. And I apologise for my lack of taste. We're great admirers of your poetry, Siegfried. Before you take offence, Ivor, we like your work too. Careful, Stephen, that was almost enthusiasm. Perhaps uh, they will play one of your charming songs, Mr Novello, and then we could dance to it. I can't tempt Stephen, though. Why not? Because I only do the Velita. So there's all that kind of, you know, brittle, catty, you know, sort of... Objectionable. Objectionable sort of emptiness going on. And then in his later years, as soon as played by Peter Capaldi, at which point his face seems to have settled into a mask of utter despondency. I mean, you know, the way that Peter Capaldi can yeah, look absolutely. horrified by the world in a way that almost nobody else can, which is so... Strange when you think of him as that kind of young, fresh-faced figure in Local Hero, bounding after a mermaid and, you know, and speaking in umpteen different languages. The thing with Terence Davis, his films have always been deeply personal, and there is a lot of Terence Davis in the portrait of Sassoon, the inner struggles with his sexuality, although this is actually a much more sort of sensuous, almost occasionally bawdy film than Terence Davis has made in the past. I mean, it's his most overtly out film. Also, the fact that Sassoon has a late-in-the-day conversion to Catholicism and Terence Davis obviously famously wrestled with um, Roman Catholicism before turning his back on the church and completely abandoning it. Behind it all is this very heartbreaking search. I mean, benediction, you know, what you're looking for is some kind of sacrament. You're looking for some kind of redemption. And Terence Davis has said in interviews about this that he's looking in all the wrong places. He's looking for redemption in other people and you only ever find it within yourself. And it's, I think it's interesting that the, the comparison between Siegfried Sassoon's sense of failure and unfulfillment, which is dramatised in this film, kind of, you can see some of Terence Davis in that, despite the fact that Terence Davis has made films that are, in my opinion, quite often sublime and quite often transcendent. I mean, of Time in the City, I think, is one of the greatest personal reminiscences of, of, of a town I've ever seen. I mean, it's a, it's, a very, very, it's a very sad film. There is a lot of loss and grief and torment, but it is also vibrant. And it's, in many ways, Terence Davis's most accessible work. Um, it, you know, he, there's a long period between this and, and Quiet Passion. I mean, he doesn't make films, you know, you know, he doesn't churn them out. There's four or five years between each of them, but it's... It's a Terence Davis film with subject matter in it that is so Terence Davis that it's absolutely no surprise that you go, OK, well, I'm just I'm here for this. And I I thought it was very moving. And I, I read Sassoon when I was at, uh, at school. And so I had a little bit of background knowledge. That was it. But I imagine most people did because the war poets is a kind of, you know, is a, is a set subject. But I thought it was really well done. And it is a film about longing for transcendence and about the sadness of not achieving it. And I think that Terence Davies has achieved transcendence.